Hey folks, here with your video update for this week. Uh, you can see I'm standing at the doorway uh, outside of the side entrance of our main building. Uh, over here, other side of the parking lot. Uh, off in the distance, maybe you can see uh, we've got children, preschool children, playing on our playground. Um, it's a, a getting a little bit more chilly day than it started. Uh, anyway, I w though I wanted to come here to talk to you um, for a few reasons. So here, uh, the first is that there are a few announcements I wanted to make, and they just happen to be all posted here on the doorway, uh, uh, taped to the window, so you can see them as you come in. So the first, uh, right here, you may have already seen this in uh, emails or the Facebook post, or certainly you'll get it in the newsletter uh, as well, that this week our Coronavirus Commission at the church has made the decision to uh, transition forward into having masks again be optional so masks are now optional uh, at the church uh, we had been requiring them but as the health situation uh, has gotten better in our community in our state and in our country uh, we feel good about making this transition this move now you uh, th there are two things at the same time we are uh, both making masks optional and continuing to emphasize that we are a mask friendly congregation we don't want this pendulum to swing to feel like oh uh, we had to wear masks and now anyone who is wearing masks oh what's wrong with them or there's something going on no we we are we have been and we always will continue to be a mask friendly congregation so you are empowered to make the choice that you feel is best for your health and for the health of your family with that empowerment though comes some reminders of course first and foremost to respect the decisions of others if they do choose to wear masks and you don't and vice versa uh, we also want to remind you uh, that if you have any symptoms even if you know it's just allergies or just some other reason if you have any symptoms you need to be staying home that's not just for for us from church but that's the responsible thing to do in the world in which we live um, because we keep discovering uh, folks uh, all around us in our lives who have symptoms that they attributed to something else and it turns out that it that it has been uh, the coronavirus. Um, also, if you are in a high risk category, please uh, follow all all protocols. If you come into an exposure uh, from someone, there are pretty clear CDC guidelines on that in terms of how long you need to mask uh, and, and, and when to get a test, testing, vaccination, all of that is still important. So uh, we are not throwing caution to the wind or, or in any way being unsafe in all of our reminders, but we are making this positive move forward, right? So we are not requiring masks. So uh, you, you will not have to wear one when you come to worship or to Sunday school or Bible studies or anything else like that um, in these coming days. Okay, that's the first announcement, which is one that I know many folks have been waiting to hear. Um, also, what a lot of us have been waiting on in an exciting way is, oh, you, the reflection is kind of getting in the way, but you can uh, I'll verbally remind you what you, you've seen uh, written about in the announcements and, and you've heard it uh, with Moment for Mission and other announcements in worship. And that is that for the season of Lent, this year we have a very exciting integrated season of Lent. I want to talk about some of those other pieces, but right now first I want to uh, talk to you about the Common Read. We are doing a church-wide Common Read for the 40 days of Lent. And uh, that Common Read is going to be a book uh, by Dr. Barbara Brown Taylor called An Altar in the World, A Geography of Faith is the subtitle. An Altar in the World. So, so what she essentially does in this book, one chapter at a time, is walk through different spiritual practices that are rooted in biblical stories that are a part of the Christian tradition and have been for centuries. Uh, and some that have a new twist on them in a modern way. But uh, it's, it's an invitation in this season of Lent to engage in these spiritual practices, but also to read a book about them and to come and talk. So each Sunday morning during Sunday school, uh, and there's also a, a midweek time as well if you can't do Sunday mornings, but each Sunday during Sunday school, uh, everyone who signs up to be in the common read will be placed in a small group. We've got a, some great uh, small group leaders that have been trained and, and are ready to, uh, to, to guide the conversation. And they'll talk through two chapters each week. And this is purposely designed to be uh, episodic, not serial. So if you can come to every week, that's wonderful. Uh, it'll, it, there will be a cumulative effect in your own participation in your own life. But this is purposefully designed and, and the book was selected so that if you can, if you miss a week, you're not behind. Uh, each, each session, each small group session 
uh, stands on its own legs. So it, it's able to be engaged with, and if you miss one or two, and you jump back in the next one, you're not behind, you're still just as much a part of the class because they'll be talking about that particular set of readings, uh, those two chapters for the particular week. Now, the reason I'm talking about it now though, this starts uh, in Lent, the first Sunday in March. So this Sunday, the last Sunday in February, you can still sign up. You can sign up in the hallway or in the narthex out front of the church, or uh, there's a link to a Google form you can click to fill out online uh, if you'd like to be signed up for the common read to be placed in a group you can purchase books here at the church they're ten dollars each or you can purchase them on your own or you can uh, check them out from the library digitally or hard copy uh, our local mobile public library even has an online uh, digital uh, audio reading of the book that's actually read by the author by barbara brown taylor herself so you, so you can do that if you'd like um, sign up to be in a small group most of these small groups meet in person. There is one Zoom option as well for folks if you're not comfortable or not able to be here in person, but you'd like to be part of that, uh, do the, the Zoom option. Now the common read is a big part of a even fuller season of Lent here. So this uh, Holy Ordinary is our theme for Lent. And uh, we're gonna be exploring, uh, with a little help from Barbara Brown Taylor, the ways in which uh, the Holy Otherness of God is discovered and found, encountered and lived in our ordinary lives, right? That, that in order to participate in the work that God is doing and to have our eyes open to what God's doing in our world and in our own lives, uh, that's not something we have to go on a, a silent retreat or go spend 40 days in the wilderness fasting and praying to discover. No, we can find the presence of God in the midst of our ordinary lives. And we're gonna look uh, each Sunday and Wednesday at biblical stories that open us up to that presence of God, the holiness of God in the midst of our ordinary lives. So um, we will be intersecting with the Common Read book. Some of the same scriptures that she talks about will be scriptures that we will preach on Sundays and Wednesdays. So we kick off this coming Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, March 2nd, with our Ash Wednesday service at noon. That'll be in the sanctuary. Uh, it will include receiving uh, the Lord's Supper and then the imposition of ashes on your forehead for those who, who wish to do so. So um, we hope to see you there Wednesday. And then that kicks off our Wednesday midweek Lenten series. So this will take us all the way up into Holy Week in, in April. Uh, each Wednesday at noon, we'll have a special uh, short worship service that includes reflecting on scripture, uh, includes liturgy that's drawn from the Celtic Christian tradition in Iona. And it's a special chance to in, in the midst of, in the middle of our days, in the middle of our weeks, to gather together uh, in worship. So I hope you'll be a part of that. Uh, you'll also see in the in the bulletin announcements and the newsletter a bunch of other uh, special events that we're doing in the season of Lent. And I'll maybe make a few other videos about each of those, but I just want to highlight that for you. So, um, like Vanna White, here we go. Masks are optional and we are mask friendly. Sign up for the Common Read. And on Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, we begin our Lenten series, Holy Ordinary. That's a lot going on here in the life of our church. I think it's fitting to be talking about how we find the ordinariness of God, uh, the holiness of God in the ordinariness of our lives uh, here, standing outside. It's not even literally inside the church building, but out in the community. Um, we want to glimpse the, the holiness of God. I, I, I can't, I don't know if you can hear it in the, in the recording or not, but... The whole time I'm out here talking, there's the joyful noise of uh, preschool children from our uh, the, the Goodwill Gulf Coast Child Development Center that meets here in our on our uh, campus. There's a holiness of God's presence that is heard in the voices and, and the laughter and the joy of those children. And I want to invite you in the midst of this season to look for many other places to experience the holiness of God in the ordinary gifts that each day brings. Bye folks, we'll see you soon.